Hi there! In today's video, I'm working on my Shortrocity AI YouTube short generator again. And specifically, I would like to work on the automatic captions that are generated for the shorts. Now, let me actually show you how this works if you haven't seen the previous videos or if you just don't remember. So basically, we can create a text file into which we can insert some sort of source material based on which the short will be generated. So let's pick some sort of news article. And I will pick this article about Grok, the new LPU that allows you to get really fast responses from LLMs. So I'll just copy the whole thing and I'll paste it in here. And then what we do is we just run python3 main.py and we give it the name of the source file, which is in this case text.text. And then we just run it. So now it will generate a script for this YouTube short. And then it will generate the narration of that script with 11 labs. And of course, the script is generated with ChatGPT. And finally, we generate images using DALI 3. And finally, we combine all of these into a video. And here it is. Here is our video. So let's actually open it and see what we got. In a world where speed is king, Grok, a company headed by ex-Google engineer and CEO Jonathan Ross, presents an innovative language processing unit, LPU. Unlike traditional CPUs and GPUs, the company's TensorStream processor, or TSP, tackles data tasks in an organized sequential manner, akin to an assembly line. The results of Grok's cutting-edge technology are astounding. Their first public demo showcased an AI answers engine that generated comprehensive responses in less than a second. Grok's LPU is energy efficient and scalable, allowing multiple TSPs to work together without traditional bottlenecks, perfect for large-scale AI models. A test run revealed an impressive performance of Grok's LPU, going head-to-head -head with ChatGPT and demonstrating its remarkable processing speed. With Grok's entry, the future of AI processing as we know it could be poised for a radical shift. So there you have it. There is our AI generated short. Now, we already have automated captions, but they are not quite synced with the audio. And the reason is that we're only timing the words based on the duration of the sentence of narration, and then calculating how many words are in the sentence, and then based on how long the word is, we show it that many milliseconds. Now, I have seen other YouTubers have automated captions in their videos, because they all look the same and they always contain some mistakes in them. And finally, I found out what product they're using, and that is Submagic. So I believe that this is exactly what everyone is using, because they all have the same kind of subtitles. But unfortunately, this works only online and it is not free. So in today's video, I am going to build my own version of Submagic. So let's do it. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use Whisper, the speech recognition engine by OpenAI. And I kind of feel like this is going to be a separate project from Shortrocity because this can be used for an existing video. So like if you have a clip of a longer video and you want to add captions to it, you can use this to do that. So let's make up a name for this project. I'm going to create a directory and maybe this should be called Subtragic, but maybe I don't want to get sued. So perhaps I could call this Captastic. Let's see if anyone else has Captastic. There's some Tumblr page called Captastic and a YouTube channel and a Twitter page. How about Captacity? Did you mean capacity? No, I did not. Okay, we are going to use Captacity. And let's see if we are able to get this project on Google, because right now it is only showing <laughs> results for capacity. Anyway, this is going to be called Captacity. And let's open Captacity. And I'm going to once more regenerate that YouTube short, but I will not add the captions to it. So let's go to our main.py. And how did this thing work? So we generate the script at first, and then we generate the narration and the images, and then we create the video. So it is actually in this video.create. So we give it the narrations, and then 
we read the created narrations from the audio files and we also will have in the narrations the actual narration text and somewhere we are adding narration to video so I will just remove this part and let me actually go to the definition of this to see if this only adds the narration or does it do something else it actually adds the audio too so I can't really <laughs> comment that out so what we have to do is we have to just say don't draw the text where are we using draw text just at that one point so maybe if I comment that out and then I run main.py again with text dot text then it will generate the YouTube short without the text and then we can add it with whisper now while it is generating that let's set up whisper so let's create a main.py again and we're going to import whisper which I have already installed but I will add it into requirements dot text and I believe that whisper has to be installed from the github repo so let's search for whisper and here we have the repo and down here we have a way to install it so let's copy this and put it in requirements so that we remember how to install it and how whisper works is that first we have to set up the model so let's say that the model is going to be whisper dot load model and we are going to pass in I think just base maybe there was like a different version for different languages but maybe base has all the languages maybe there was like a base n for English but let's just use the base and then what we can do is we can say model dot transcribe and we give it an audio file and then it will transcribe it and we can pass all kinds of things in there so let's actually say audio equals audio let's say audio file and let's add that here audio file let's read it from the command line so let's import sys and let's do sys.argv1 and there is a thing that I have never used but I saw it in the documentation we have word timestamps so this will extract word level timestamps using the cross attention pattern and dynamic time warping and include the timestamps for each word in each segment so this is probably something we can use to accomplish what we want so let's say word timestamps is true and do we have anything else here verbose temperature compression ratio we have all kinds of things here but I don't think we need anything and this will return a dictionary which I believe has a key called text or something like that so let's say that the transcription is that and I think we can just print the transcription transcription and let's see what's in there and is this ready okay we have another short here let's see this should not have any text on it I will actually have to open it with xdg open Grok led by an ex Google engineer Jonathan Ross claims to have created the first ever language processing unit LPU okay so it did in fact work but something weird happened with the images not quite sure what perhaps in write text I am doing something with the video writer and then <laughs> that will screw something up but anyway we have now a video with no transcript and I will still check what is wrong with this thing so we have the video writer and we write to it the frame so that is probably the issue so if I will comment out these lines then we will not write the text but I will copy from the shorts this one into my Captacity project and I'm going to still run this one more time so that we get a proper video out of it but we can still start working on this so now we have the short here so let's try to transcribe it word by word python3 main.py and we give it short.avi now actually <laughs> this has to be an audio file so we have to convert it into audio which I guess I could have extracted already but we can just do ffmpeg input short.avi and output I guess we just put short.mp3 and that should do it so now we have 
the audio version. Grok, led by an ex-Google engineer, okay. Jonathan Great. Ross. So then we can run Python 3 main.py and we can give it the short.mp3. And let's see what will happen. We got some warning, that is fine. I think we were able to set this somehow in... I don't remember what it was. I think in decode options we have to set the FP16 somehow. So decode options, and this is a dictionary. And I think it was something like just FP16 true. <laughs> something like this. Maybe that way. I actually have a project where I have been using this. So I might check that out. I had to do that when I was building my Gemini demo. So here in the modules I have recorder. And here I believe I passed in that FP thing in there. Okay, so we just passed it in here. FP16 equals false. Okay, that's fine. Let's do that. FP16 is false. And we actually got a response from the model. So what do we have in here? We have a dictionary with a key text, and that is the full text. And then we have a key segments, which has a list with ID, seek, start, end, text. Okay, so I believe that the start and end are in seconds. So let's get those from there. Let's say that the segments equals transcription segments. And let's print all of them. So let's do for segment in segments. We can just print and let's say the start to the end. And there we have the following word, which is word. And in fact, that is not quite correct. So this text still has multiple words in it. So we have an ID start end text tokens temperature average log prob, compression ratio, no speech prob, and then we have words. And this is again a list, and there we have every word separately. So that's actually what we want. Now I'm not sure what these segments mean. We might actually want to use the segments if every segment is something we would like to show at once. But maybe we want more control. So actually what we want to do is we want to get the words. Now is that words inside the segments or is that words inside the whole transcription dictionary? I think it's inside the segments. So it's kind of annoyingly made in my opinion, but let's do this. Let's say here for word in segment words. And of course this has to be, well, it has to be word start. And this one has to be word end. And let's actually print the whole thing as well. So up here, we just say that the segment starts and ends here. And the text is segment text. And let's add like a couple of spaces here. So now we should get all the segments and then the words in the segments and where do they start and where do they end. Let's try that again. And I probably want to save the segments into a file so that we don't have to generate them every time. So let's import JSON and let's do with open segments.json in write mode as f f dot uh, actually JSON dump segments into f. Hopefully we can serialize it. I will put it in the end just in case it crashes. So actually we get some output from this script. Okay, and here it is. So we have all of these segments and words here. So the first segment is Grok, led by an ex-Google engineer, Jonathan Ross. And all of the words in there are Grok, led by an ex-Google engineer, Jonathan Ross. And we have the times here. So we can actually use this. And we probably saved all this stuff into segments.json. So now we can use this to test it out so we don't have to <laughs> transcribe every time. Now it is kind of nice that we have these segments, but maybe the segments are too long for a YouTube short. So it doesn't really help. We still have to create our own segments. So what do we actually want to do so that we can get 
the transcription over the video. Let's go and take a look at our shortrosity project. And we have this text.py, which has add narration to video. And we have the input video, which is the file name. We have an output directory and an output file. And we have the narrations. But now the narrations should be just the segment data or the transcription data or just the words. And then right now we loop through all of the narrations and then we calculate how long the word should be shown for and then we write that many frames. But this is not going to work now. We have to actually read the video frame by frame and decide which word should be shown when. So let's do that. We have to do all this stuff. Let's copy it here. So we want to open an input video file. Let's call it a video file, which will be sys argv0, sorry, 2. So we give it the audio file and the video file at the moment. And we have to import cv2. And this is now video file. And we have to do all this stuff to like initialize the video writer. I'm not quite sure what is happening here, to be honest. But here we like set the codec or something and then initialize the video writer. And we have a temp video. I'm just going to say now, I guess we could have an output directory. And this is a temp file into which we're going to write, which might actually be just the output file, maybe not a temp file, because we don't have to do anything else, I guess. So let's just call it output file. And I will set this here as well, but I will just say import OS and I will just put it in the current directory. So I think we can get like os.path or it's like this path. Maybe I want to use copilot right now. All right, I have copilot enabled now, so I can say that the current directory is going to be this. And I'm going to do path join current directory and with transcript. And I do this just so that I can call this script from outside of the script directory. So now we have an output file and we have an input file. So then we can do while cap is open. So cap is the video capture and while it is open, actually <laughs> Copilot tries to do something here already, but it's not quite what I want to do. But I do want to read every frame. Let's do that. But I don't want to do any of this. I do want to write the frame. And I don't really want to show anything either. I just want to write it to the out file. And we also need the frame rate, which I believe is actually this. Because here we have to pass in FPS. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just here. So let's set here frame rate. And we can actually get it from the capture. So let's put it here, frame rate. And these are something else. They are frame size and ease color. Okay, so now we have the frame rate and we need that to know the time at each frame. So let's set time to be zero. And for every frame, time plus equals one, <laughs> not one. It equals one divided by frame rate. So time is now going to be in seconds. So now we know which word we should draw at this point. Now it might be nice if we convert this into a different kind of format. So maybe we could have like our words, which is a dictionary, and then we can have the timestamp of the word and the word in there. So we don't have to print any of this stuff. We are just going to say that words start equals word word. But this is not word word, it is word text. So then we're going to have a dictionary where we can easily look up what word should be at what position. Now I guess we need the end time as well. But for now I'll just make it so that it will show the word when its start time arrives. And then it will just go the next word when the next word starts. Let's figure the rest out later. And I will remove this thing. And I am going to also remove this thing because I want to right now read the segments from the file that we have already. So with open segments.json as f segments equals f dot, sorry, json load f. 
and let's just print out these first. So let's print the words and exit and let's just run it. And of course we did not provide all the files so we should have a short dot avi as well. And we don't have a text in there. Was it actually Word? <laughs> it was actually Word so I should have trusted Copilot. So let's say Word and let's run it again. So now we have all the times for all the words. So how do we then check if we are at a specific word? Well, we can just loop through all the words for word in words. And actually we want to get the start time and word in words. We want to do the following. Thank you, Copilot, for being so fast. You are making my programming so much more efficient by doing this. So if the start time is greater than or equal to the current time, then we are going to say that the word to use is going to be the word. So now we're going to loop through all of the words and we're going to pick the word to use based on the start time. And every time we loop through all of the words, which is not that great, but basically we should have the word to use every time, which should be like the closest word to this time. So then we can write the text and maybe Copilot already can do it now. So here it is. Now we are not really styling it anyway right now, but let's actually see, does this actually work? Let's run this thing and see what happens. Okay, sorry, I don't know how to use Python, so this actually should be items. So if we now run it, then it should work. And we did something, and it was pretty fast. Let's take a look. We have with transcript. So let's open it. xdg open with transcript.avi. And up there we have b. <laughs> But this is only three seconds for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Let's go back and figure this out. Very interesting. Why did it not read the whole thing? This should read one frame. And if it fails, then we break. That's very interesting. Let's put here frame equals zero and frame plus equals one. And let's print broke on frame frame. Let's run it again. Uh, sorry, <laughs> this should be frame number because we already have a frame there. Broke on 75, but there should be a lot more frames than 75. Let's again xtg open short.avi. Grok, led by an ex-Google engineer Jonathan Ross, claims to have created Maybe there's something weird going on in the beginning. Let's check out the latest one that we have generated here. Let's xdg open this one. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their tensor stream process... Okay, this seems to work. So I am going to copy this one in there into Captacity and of course I have to now extract the audio again so ffmpeg i short.avi short.mp3 and yes I want to override it and then I want to save this stuff again into the file and now we actually did the whole thing and we broke on frame 1735 so probably we went to the end now so something went wrong with the first video i guess and i get now what went wrong because we didn't write the frames of the video but we still wrote the audio but cv2 doesn't read audio it only reads the frames so that's why we got only like 75 frames all right so let's comment this out again and uncomment that and comment this and now we actually should have the with transcript in there so if we xdg open with transcript we should have something in there let's see what we have all right so first of all we don't have audio because cv2 doesn't support audio and we only have answers 
up there. So let's see what is the issue here. Is answers in fact the last word? <laughs> let's go all the way down and answers is the last word. So my terrible algorithm did not work, which is because this should be the other way. So if the start time of the word is before the current time, then we use that. And that seems kind of counterintuitive, but it is like this because we are looping through all of the words. So, I mean, I guess we can just do else we're going to break. <laughs> so we don't actually have to go through all of the words every time. We just go through them until we find a word that is after the current time. Then we don't have to look at them anymore. So let's try to run this again. And now it should be a lot faster because we already saved the segments into the file. And we're going to read them from there. And it should only write the video. And there we have it. So let's open it and see if it works. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit. It is actually working, but now the text is up there. So now we have to style the text. And I do want to show multiple words at the same time. But at first, let's make it show just one word at a time. So I guess we can just extract from this file the function for write text. Let's copy that and let's put it in here. So we're going to have a function write text that takes the text and the frame and the video writer. And then it is going to add the shadow first and then it's going to add the text. So the shadow is just the text but in black and with a thicker thickness. So we should be able to use this now. Let's use it instead of this one. So we are going to say write text and this gets the word to use and the frame and the out. And that might actually work already. <laughs> Let's try and run this thing because I think that's the only styling we do. Everything is in this write text function, which I want to make it better. I want it to look like that sub magic. All right. And we have now created the video again. Let's open it. And now the text is right there, like in the original version. But now it should be exactly aligned with the narration. Let's add the narration to it and see what it sounds like. Now, really, I want to pass only the video file to this script. I don't want to have to separately extract the audio. So I will actually import FFmpeg. Now, previously, I've just used subprocess, but there's actually an FFmpeg library for Python. So let's add FFmpeg uh, Python. I think this is what it's called. And we also need actually CV2. Is it uh, CV2 Python? Or is it it's, it's uh, OpenCV Python, I think. Let's actually check. OpenCV Python. It is OpenCV Python, okay. And let me install, pip install, ffmpeg python. Now it's important that you install ffmpeg python, not just ffmpeg. So now we only take the video file. And then what we do is we can say ffmpeg.input. And we give it the video file and output the audio file. And then we just run it. But this is not the output file. This is going to be the like temporary audio file. So let's call it temp audio file. And let's have it here. Temp audio file is current directory temp audio. Now I guess we could actually write it in the temp of the operating system. So I think there's something like import temp file. So let's actually create that. How do I use it? Temp file named temporary file suffix wave dot name. Okay. So this will create a temporary file, which will be automatically deleted, I believe, when the script ends. Yes, delete is true by default. So now we are going to convert the video into audio. And I will actually move all this down. And let's actually make like a function. Let's define main. And main will do this. So we will extract audio from video. And then we're going to do all this stuff. And then we're going to do if name equals main, then we run main. So now we are going to have the 
temp audio file and that is what we pass in here temp audio file to the whisper transcription but currently we just load the segments from there and then we just write the captions in there but then we want to add the audio back so i guess we can use ffmpeg again now let's see if we can actually do that with the ffmpeg library ffmpeg dot input is going to be the output file and output is going to be final.mp4 but that is not enough how does this actually work is there some sort of documentation i have no idea where to look for the documentation we have input file name and keyword arguments okay any supplied keyword arguments are passed to ffmpeg verbatim okay so we can just pass in whatever we want in here so let's go into shortrocity and we have to basically do this right maybe we have to pass in like two inputs and then do all this stuff so let's do that can i just say input is also the temp audio file and uh, we also have to pass into input the arguments and the arguments are these but we have multiple <laughs> of the same argument can we add the same argument multiple times maybe i'll just use sub process <laughs> sub process this is the easiest way of doing this so let's just go back here and copy this stuff and put it here and the temp video is actually going to be the um, output file and the narration will be temp audio file and in fact this is why we have to have the temp file so let's actually make that a temp file as well let's copy this and let's say temp video file and this is um, mp4 and we can use this i mean we still have to do this stuff <laughs> so we can use instead of output file the temp video file and then we pass it in here as the temp video file as the input and the audio file and then the output is going to be just the output file great so then what we have to do is we have to convert this conversion as well into this format so we are going to just get the input which is going to be input for our video file and then we are going to get the temp audio file and that's it can i make this a function can i just say ffmpeg and put the command there like this and i am going to make that function def ffmpeg command will just do that and i guess we can return this thing okay so now we can just do that and down here we can just say ffmpeg this thing okay now it should work let's run through it one more time we are going to extract audio from the video we are then going to load the segments from the file we're going to get the words and their start times and then we're going to start the capture take the frame rate and do all this codec stuff and video writer stuff and we don't actually have to do this stuff anymore we save the time we read a frame we find the word to use we write the word on the screen or on the video and we add to the time and then we write and then we add to the temp video file into which we are writing here the temp audio file which we created up here so then it should work and i guess i have to call cv2 destroy all windows or cap release out release let's be good citizens and do this as well probably doesn't matter because we just shut down the script after that but i guess it is good practice let's run it python 3 main.py and we just give short dot avi and i'm going to delete everything just to be sure so now let's run it and we got um some error for some reason but we ran it and we have short.avi which is the original and with transcript and the other ones were just temporary files 
and they're actually saved into temp. So now if we xdg open with transcript.avi, it will look like this. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Why doesn't it work? It kind of works, but it's not really synced. Um, let's at first fix this issue. Maybe we have to actually use AVI. So this should be AVI because our original is AVI. But uh, I don't think that causes that issue. It must be something wrong with our timing here or something in here. Hopefully time is still like a float here and here. That can't be the issue. Let me actually print the time and let's print word to use whatever. And let's run this again. Okay. Yeah, they are floats. But why does it not work? Wait a minute. Ah, I'm writing the frame. But again, we are writing the frame here. So we don't have to write the frame. That's the problem. Stop this madness and run it again. <laughs> so we only need to write the text. That will write the frame. Now we were writing like double the time of every word. That's why it didn't work. But now it's going to work. All right. Let's open this thing and see as it works perfectly. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their TensorStream processor is likened to a speedy assembly line that processes data tasks sequentially and efficiently, making it a potential game changer for AI. In contrast to GPUs, this language processing unit adopts a streamlined approach, eliminating complex scheduling hardware, saving energy, and avoiding underutilization of cores. Grok's scalable chip design paves the way for large-scale AI models, as multiple processors can be connected without traditional bottlenecks. The first public demo presented a lightning-fast AI answering engine that produced responses with hundreds of words in less than a second. Exemplifying Grok's revolutionary speed, more than three quarters of the processing time was spent searching, not generating answers. Okay, there you have it. Perfect automatic captions. Perfectly timed and synchronized. So what do we have to do next? Well, we have to at least update the styling. And I do want to show more than one word at a time. So let's try to do that. But this actually worked already. So I'm going to commit this. We don't need to print that stuff. And... Yeah, pretty good. Let's git init. And we are going to git add main and requirements.txt. And actually, sorry, I need to remove my comments from here. So let's git add main again. And let's git commit. Initial commit. Amazing, it works. Let's continue. So what do we actually want to do? We want to show multiple words at the same time. So should we do something like look ahead for like three seconds or something and take all the words from there? So how could we do that? If we add here like a look ahead, which is going to be three seconds. And then we can say here like time chunk is going to be time divided by look ahead times look ahead and this has to be like math sealed and we have to import math so this is now the end of the current three second time chunk that we are going to look ahead for so if we then use the time chunk here as the start time and i will actually call this text to use and i will say plus equals space and the word. And here I can say that the text to use starts with an empty string. And then we look for the words whose start time is before this time chunk or the end of this time chunk. And they have to be before three seconds of that. But now we're going to need the end time as well. So let's actually save the end time. I think it will help us immensely. 
So words is going to be just a list. And then we are going to append to the words just the word, I guess, because we have already there the word and the start time and the end time. So we just format it a little bit differently. So we get rid of these segments and we just make them words. Now I guess we could just move this inside of that loop. I guess it doesn't really change anything. So let's do that. Let's move the whole thing in here. So we loop through the segments and the words in the segments. And we have the text to use, which is empty, and we have the time chunk. So then we can say that if the word start is greater than or equal to time chunk minus um, look ahead and the end is less than or equal to time chunk not plus look ahead just time chunk then we are gonna draw it so then we're gonna do this so none of this stuff anymore if the word is within the time chunk that we want to draw all the words for then we just add the word there now there might be a space already in the word let's actually do just this maybe there was a space there and then we write the text text to use now we are going to have to deal with the word wrapping but let's see how that works let's actually print text to use so we can see what happens and let's print the time as well time and text to use and let's run this thing again Okay, <laughs> can only concatenate string, not dict. So, of course, this is word, word. Let's try again. Okay, it actually seems like it's working. Now, we still have to check that maybe there's too much text in there, so then we have to split it even more. But it kind of seems like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So, let's open with transcript. Grok! a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their tensors... Okay, so it is kind of working, but now we have to implement like word wrapping into this. And then also somehow check if we have too many words in there. Although maybe that can be fixed by a smaller look ahead. But let's at first implement word wrap so we already calculate the text size here but we probably want to like draw one word at a time so let's do this words equals text split and for word in words we have to calculate the size of the text and the width will be text size zero so text width is going to be that and then we have to check if the width is too small or too big to fit in the screen, then we have to do a line break. So if text width is greater than frame shape one, I'm guessing that is going to be the width of the frame. And here it wants to make the font smaller. I guess we could do that too, but really I want to add a line break. But probably what I want to do is I want to take the text Y already up here and if the text width is greater than the width of the frame then we are going to say text y plus equals text size one which is going to be the height of the text plus the border okay the border is not quite quite correct i want to probably add like a margin or something and let's set margin to like one I'm not sure what these units actually are. I guess uh, pixels. Not quite sure. Let's just do that. So if we go over the width, we are going to move to the next line. And this, of course, is not text because text is the full text. This is going to be um, line. So the line plus equals the word and a space. And we have to set the line here as an empty string. And here we pass in the line. So we add to the line the word. We calculate the width of the line. If the line width is greater than the frame width, then we move the text Y to a different line. Else, we want to actually add this line to the text that we want to actually draw. 
There's probably <laughs> a specific way you have to do this, but I'm not very proficient in this kind of thing. Because we can't really use this line because we already add the word in it. But I guess we can just say line to draw is going to be the line. And let's set it here too. Line to draw. Let's set it to none to begin with. And then when we move to the next line, we draw the line that there is to draw. So if line to draw, then we are going to draw it, which we are going to do with this thing, which I guess is that, but I want to be sure. So I will copy this and I will put it here. Although I probably want to make this a separate function because I want to call this function again after this loop. So I will call this write text and I will create another one, write line. And it is going to do this, write line. And what does one? Line to draw, frame, video writer, text Y, font, font scale, white color, black color, thickness, margin. Okay, actually I want to only pass in there the line to draw and the frame and the video writer. And I will move, well, I still have to set the stuff there. So I guess I can pass everything there. So maybe I should make this like a class or something. Anyway, let's put this in here. And let's take all these things and add them into this function. So text is now going to be the line to draw. Well, I can call it text here. And we also need the border. So let's pass in the border. And we don't need the margin. We only need the border. So this is going to be border. So if we have a line to draw, we draw the line and then we set line to draw to none. And after this loop, we are going to say, if we still have a line to draw, then we draw that line. Because we might not have a new line anymore in the end. And again, the writing happens in the right line. So we have to put this in here. And the text size is now going to be this. And that we use to center horizontally the text. Okay, that makes sense. Does this make sense? <laughs> line to draw is none. Line is empty. And I guess we can like strip this thing. I guess we can strip this too. Do we have to do actually this? Sorry, we can't do that. <laughs> we have to strip it when we pass it in here. So we add to the line, we calculate the width of the line. If the line doesn't fit into the frame, then we're gonna move it to the next line. And if we already had some line that should be drawn, we draw that first before moving to the next line. And if it fits, then we just say line to draw is that. And we wait until we get too much text and then we draw the previous text that already fits. And then finally in the end, we draw the last line, if there still was a line. I think that makes sense. Now, it's not going to be centered now if there's multiple lines, but uh, never mind. Let's try and run this thing and see what happens. Text size referenced before assignment. Okay, yeah, because we are centering it now vertically. So I will just omit this for now. We're going to start from the middle and that's going to be the position. We actually have to like calculate before we write the line, we should calculate how many lines we have so that we can center them all. Okay, let's run this thing. And again, this is working fine, but let's see what it produces. And let's open this thing. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI okay, applications. We are not drawing the second line. And that is probably because we have to say here that the line to draw is now this line, even if it goes over. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I have a few problems here. <laughs> so we are just adding to this line all the time, but we should, of course, reset this line at some point. So when it goes over, then the line should be only the last word in there. Okay, so the line should actually be this. So the current word and a space. And the line to draw should actually be already set, right, from the previous iteration. 
or do we have to still set it here? I mean, I guess we have the case that if the word already is so long that it doesn't fit. So this one should then be line strip. So we strip out the last space from there and we should split it and we should take everything until the last one. So we don't want the last word from there. And I guess we don't have to put space in here. We just do this. So we strip the line and we split it by space and we take everything but the last word from it. And that is the line. We have to draw that line at some point. Maybe that makes sense. Let's run it again. Grok, a tech company led by an... Not this one. <laughs> Let's run this again. And what do we have? Can't convert object to string what uh, we have to <laughs> join this thing because this is going to be a list so we have to join it with a space this is a horrible line of code <laughs> let's see if that will work and i guess i can remove that print maybe it is slowing down this process a little bit so we don't need to do that but let's open this sorry <laughs> this thing grok a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, what? promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications, making okay. it a potential... I screwed something up completely now. That is very weird. Okay, first of all, I don't think we have to do this. We only have to set it here. So if the text fits, then we're going to draw it. But why did it show the same thing all the time? That's weird. Let's do something like this here. Let's add the frame number here. And let's do frame number plus equals one. And if frame number is greater than, I don't know, 100, then we break. So we don't have to wait for the whole thing to finish so that we can test it. Although, let's see about the audio. Okay, let's run it. Grok! A tech company led by an ex-Google engineer claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their tenth... Very weird now. Write text. Text to use. So if the text fits, we save it to line to draw. And then if the text doesn't fit anymore when we add to it, then if we have a line to draw, then we draw that line. And we move the text by the text size and the margin. And then we reset the line to only the word that went over. I'm not sure what's the problem here. Let's actually print here. Print text. Let's just do that. Let's just print the text we're going to draw in there. And let's run it. Okay, so... That's kind of fine. We are drawing company led by an... Wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Grok. A tech company led by an. That's what we are drawing, right? Let's also print here. When we write the text, just print an empty line. And let's see what we're actually doing. Okay. That seems correct. So we are supposedly drawing exactly what we want to draw. But it doesn't look right. Grok. A tech company led by an ex-Google engineer claims to have created the first ever language... Ah, <laughs> okay. I know what's going on here. Again, because write text actually writes the freaking thing. So let's do this. Let's just return the frame. Return frame. And write text also returns frame. And let's say that the frame equals that. Frame equals that because we are drawing a frame for each line so that's why it's flickering like that so now we return the new frame so down here we're gonna say that the frame equals that and then we are going to write to out the frame so i guess we don't need the out here do we video writer we don't need it here and we don't need it here, and we don't need it here, and we don't need it here. Okay, let's try again. And let's open it. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, 
claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their tensor stream processor is likened to a speedy okay, assembly so line that processes... The reason why it stopped there is that we only did the 100 frames. But something was left out from there. And is that now because we are not setting the line to draw here? Let's actually print here. Dropped line, line strip. Do we have like dropped lines in there? Hmm. Yes, we dropped that line from there. And then we never draw it. Okay. Now I wonder why that is. Wait a minute. Ah, so X Google doesn't fit. Okay. Yes, because it's the last word. And since we just loop through each of the words, it's not going to work. So could we do something like um, while true, and we can say word index is zero, and we can say here word index plus plus or plus equals one and word is words word index and then what we can do here is we can not do word index plus plus so then we go back to the same word again which means we can just reset the line to an empty line because we go back to the same word again now i feel like there should be a simpler way in python to do this but <laughs> I can't think of a way right now. If you know a way, then you can submit a pull request. But I guess now it works, because every time we have a line that fits, we go to the next word. But if we have a line that doesn't fit, then we stay on the same word. And I guess um, <laughs> we still have to break out of this thing. So we can say while word index is less than the word length, or the length of how many words we have. Let's see. But now, there is a problem that there's too much text there. I don't want to have three lines. I only want to have two lines. But we have this dropped line here, but it shouldn't, I guess, matter now. Let's open this. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit. Prom Where is engineer? Ex-Google engineer. Let's actually print here the text. Do we print it already? Let's print here. Writing text, text. There's no engineer there. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google. That's it. Where is engineer? Where are we writing this thing? Text to use. Okay. <laughs> so actually, Copilot tried to fix this issue originally, but I didn't let it. So we actually do have to add to the end plus look ahead. Because it is checking the end of the word. And of course, it can't be <laughs> between the time chunk. Like, if the engineer word starts right at the end of the time chunk, then it's not going to be within the time chunk. So we have to look ahead to the next time chunk. Okay, that's the issue. So if we add plus look ahead, now it should work. Let's run it. And we have actually a lot of text here now. So it dropped a lot of stuff from there. Let's take a look at this now. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit. Okay, something weird is still going on. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. What is going on there? It's overlapping now. Wait a minute. Was that the issue? Because the time chunk is the end of the time chunk. So it was correct to begin with. It should be like this. But why is it dropping that stuff? Or should I be just looking at the start times? Do I care about the end times? If the word starts within that time, then we use it. That is the issue. So we don't care when the word ends. If it starts within that chunk, then we're going to use it. Or maybe we only want the end. If it ends within that time chunk. Yeah, that is, the, that is probably the better way to do this. Let us try and run it again. So now we are writing Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google 
engineer claims to have created the first ever. Okay. And after that, it's going to stop. So let's try. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language process. Okay, so now we have to write a little bit more frames. So now it's going to work. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, it's going to work. We are going to write, let's say, 600 frames. And we have to add to the margin. Let's use 5 as the margin and let's see what happens. So this is the margin between the lines. So let's run it again. And I think I saw that they are now overlapping, kind of. I probably should have here just end like this. It should be smaller than the time chunk, because then the next time it's going to be equal. Okay, but just a small, small problem. But let's open this and see if it works. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their TensorStream processor is likened to a speedy assembly line that processes data tasks sequentially and efficiently, making it a potential game changer for AI. Okay, it's kind of working, but there was some of that having the end of the previous subtitle be the start of the next one. And I actually probably want to use the start here because otherwise it's not going to be synchronized to the start. <laughs> so I think that is still better to do it like this. And I need more margin. It was not enough. I will put 15 in here. And was there something else? Let's see how that affects it. Now, I think there is too much text. We have to make it less. Or maybe make it a smaller font or something. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their TensorStream processor is likened to a speedy assembly line that processes data tasks sequentially and efficiently, making it a potential game changer for AI. In contrast to GPUs, this... Okay, now it is working pretty well, but there's still some weird stuff to figure out. Let me actually change the look ahead to just two seconds and just take a look at what that does. And let's open it. Grok! A tech company led by an ex-Google engineer claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their TensorStream processor is likened to a speedy assembly line that processes data tasks sequentially and efficiently, making it a potential game changer for AI. In contrast... Okay. Now it's working. Now, one more thing we would probably want to do is split it by the sentences that there's never like the beginning of the next sentence in a caption but i'm not quite sure how to integrate that in here because we have this look ahead now i'm not sure if the look ahead is even good maybe we should only look at the text and take a certain number of words or something like that so what are we doing here we're just looking at the time when the word is said but let me actually run the whole thing now and let's see what the full short will now look like. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their TensorStream processor is likened to a speedy assembly line that processes data tasks sequentially and efficiently, making it a potential game changer for AI. In contrast to GPUs, this language processing unit adopts a streamlined approach, eliminating complex scheduling hardware, saving energy, and avoiding underutilization of cores. Grok's scalable chip design paves the way for large-scale AI models, as multiple processors can be connected without traditional bottlenecks. The first public demo presented a lightning-fast AI answering engine that produced responses with hundreds of words in less than a second. Exemplifying Grok's revolutionary speed, more than three quarters of the processing time was spent searching, not generating answers. Okay, it is looking pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit to the margin, because they were still kind of overlapping. Maybe 18 would be fine. And of course, we have to center the text properly. So I will add like a to-do here. Center multi-line text properly. 
And I think it is time to do a commit and probably end this video because I've already been coding for two and a half hours. So this is going to be a very long video. So perhaps I need to continue in the next one. But let's do a commit and a final test. So let's remove this thing. And actually we don't want to save anything anywhere. We want to do all this stuff here. We want to extract the audio, get the transcription, get the segments, and then create the video. And we don't need any of that stuff. And we don't need to print anything. Let's make sure we don't have any prints anywhere. Here we have. So remove that. Okay. So let's try this one more time with the whole process. So now it's actually using Whisper and everything and doing the full thing. Okay, it's done. So let's finally see the final product of today's video. And I will continue in the next one. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see the next video. Grok, a tech company led by an ex-Google engineer, claims to have created the first ever language processing unit, promising unprecedented speeds for AI applications. Their TensorStream processor is likened to a speedy assembly line that processes data tasks sequentially and efficiently, making it a potential game changer for AI. In contrast to GPUs, this language processing unit adopts a streamlined approach, eliminating complex scheduling hardware, saving energy, and avoiding underutilization of cores. Groke's scalable chip design paves the way for large-scale AI models as multiple processors can be connected without traditional bottlenecks. The first public demo presented a lightning-fast AI answering engine that produced responses with hundreds of words in less than a second. Exemplifying Grok's revolutionary speed, more than three-quarters of the processing time was spent searching, not generating answers. Okay, it works pretty well. But now I will commit this and I will publish it on my GitHub. So if you want to try it out, you can find the link in the description. And in future videos, I will improve this and I will also integrate it with my Shortrocity project. So I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe and leave me a comment and I will see you in the next one.